Welcome back, Cannonites, for a very special cannon fodder. Today we'll be taking a look at Halo Ground Command and a fairly well-known Halo mod, so let's dive in. We open today with the aforementioned Ground Command game. This tabletop game is, as the name implies, the ground side equivalent of fleet battles. Like its space-based counterpart, Ground Command will launch with a starter box meant to allow players to recreate key battles during the fall of Reach. Colonel, this is Noble One. There are no rebels. The Covenant are on Reach. Acknowledge Two simple words changed the lives of millions on the human colony world of Reach. On July 24th, 2552, the Spartans of Noble Team discover Covenant strike teams have infiltrated the planet's defenses and disabled a key slipspace communication hub at the remote Visegrad relay. Winter Contingency, the codename for a Covenant invasion, is declared. UNSC plans for the defense of Reach are thrown into disarray by the surprise attack, and an information lockdown is enacted to avoid mass panic. From their deeply buried bunkers and command centers, Reach High Command analyze reports, weigh the possibilities, and begin to deploy the might of the UNSC to defeat this Covenant spearhead. With the intrusion seemingly confined to a sparsely populated section of the planet, it seems the alien army can be contained and eliminated with a decisive ground campaign. They are wrong, and the planet will burn. But not before armies clash in a storm of blood and plasma, with heroism and valor never in short supply. Halo Ground Command gives you the tools to play out epic battles on Reach between stalwart soldiers of the UNSC and the merciless legions of the Alien Covenant. Cities will fall, heroes will rise, and destiny forged in battles that are yours to plan, direct, and implement on the tabletop. From massive tank engagements at Surdock Ridge to small groups of Spartans deployed in defense of New Alexandria, you are in control, making life and death decisions as a UNSC commander charged with the safety of this critical planet. Or take on the role of an alien invader, leading the Covenant invasion force as a field marshal ordered to eliminate humanity at any cost. The Covenant are on reach. Your troops await their orders. Like with Fleet Battles, the flavor text here has me fairly excited both for the game and for the implications for the lore at large. When Fleet Battles came out, it added some very important context to the events depicted in Halo Reach. In short, it explained how the fleet of Valiant Prudence found Reach before the fleet of Particular Justice. It would seem that Ground Command will continue this tradition, providing further context to the events of Halo Reach and hopefully, fill in gaps between the game and Halo The Fall of Reach. Yeah, I've made my own timeline on the matter, but it's still largely speculative even now. From a wargaming perspective, I cannot wait to combine Fleet Battles and Ground Command, an idea that was hinted at a while back. The article goes on with an interview with Neil Fawcett of Spartan Games. As is always the case, I recommend you to check out the full interview for yourself, but here are the highlights. The game is set at a 1 to 100 scale, which makes the UNSC Pelican about 12 inches or 30 centimeters in length. If you ever had the chance to play Halo Action Clicks back in the day, that set was at the 28 millimeter scale, which is roughly double the size of Ground Command. Mr. Fawcett notes that the Pelican would be about 24 inches or 61 centimeters at that scale. Scarabs will eventually make their way to the game, and while Spartan and Elite Zealot units are part of the game, they are not the focus. This game is about using all units available to you to engage in whatever scenarios you can imagine. I just hope that we get to have vehicle boarding rules. I so want to hijack a Scarab. So, like I said, those are the highlights, but be sure to check out the full interview in the article itself. Halo Ground Command is now available for pre-order on the Spartan Games website, link in the description. If you pre-order, you can get an exclusive figure of your choice, either a UNSC Marine or a Reach-style Sangheili Miner. Moving forward, the next section is an interview with the folks over at Sins of the Prophets. For those who haven't heard, Sins of the Prophets is a full conversion mod for Sins of a Solar Empire, Rebellion. The Sins of the Prophets mod converts everything into a Halo-themed experience. I've only recently downloaded the game in mod, but I am so looking forward to getting into it and sharing some of that gameplay with you all. The interview goes into further detail on the mod, which just released their 0.80 update, the team behind it, and their favorite aspects of Halo. I've had the pleasure of interacting with a couple of them, notably project lead Yuna Kraken, who is very fun to talk with. Sins of the Solar Empire is available on Steam for $40 USD, though Steam is famous for their summer sales. So, if you have a very limited budget and want to play Sins of the Prophets, keep that in mind. I've linked to the Mod DB page for Sins below, so be sure to check it out, check out the full interview in Cannon Fodder, and show some love for an awesome group of Halo fans. 
The article closes this week with a reminder about the Warzone Firefight beta, which is running through April 19th now. Grim Brother 1, along with some other folks at 343, will be playing over the weekend, so hop on and pray to the precursors that you get lucky enough to match up with some of them. With that, we come to the universe entries this week, updates to the M12 Force Applications Vehicle or Warthog, and the Type 58 Assault Gun Carriage or Wraith. The updates are light, basically just some helpful links to other articles, such as the Gauss page when discussing the Gauss Hog, or the Fuel Rod Cannon when discussing the T-52 Anti-Air Wraith. And that does it for today. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out those links I left in the description box below. You won't regret it. And before we go, a final congrats to the Sins of the Prophets team for their appearance in Cannon Fodder this week. You guys most certainly deserved it, and here's to your continued success. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.